Bloody hell, are we still doing these? More tea, Vicar. Yes, it's time for mystery box subscription crate gubbins again. Um, didn't do one last month, which led to a lot of death threats around Christmas, so thanks for that, guys. But this month it's going to be very short, actually, because I literally only have the loot crate, and no others have been sent to me. And I'll tell you for why, it's mostly down to my own incompetence. I think I forgot to tell them all that the PO box was closing, so they're probably sending them to a dead address. And also, I no longer have access to the email um, for business that I was using to talk to them on, so that's all handy, isn't it? Fear not, I'll sort it out and have some more for next month. But as it stands this month, it is merely Crute Late, the original box, which is the first like one we did on the channel. Uh, the theme this month, I believe, is Origins. Origins. I don't know what that really means. Perhaps they're going to show us where all the inflatable crowns came from. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? Right, anyway, I did remember to slit open the uh, mighty tape. so what's going on? Oh, it's very brightly coloured. There's Superman and his red knickers. Marvellous. Right, t-shirts first. Ooh, what have we got? The original since 1981, with your official Nintendo seal of quality. Yeah, it's a automatically distressed Mario thing, or Jumpman, by the looks of it um, from that drawing. Wish it didn't have that seal on, because it kind of ruins the design a bit, but other than that, that's really nice. Genuinely like that t-shirt, yes. I would wear that to a fight with a bad man. Um, oh god, there's not much in here. That'll mean high quality stuff, hopefully. Fewer items, better quality, that's what we said. Although, when I've only got one box, I prefer lots of shit things we can laugh at. But there we are. That's probably not what most people buying these things are after. Well, what's the deal here? Geeky tikis. You can collect them all. I'm sure I can. It ain't gonna fucking happen, mate. Um, so, this is Donatello? And this is, the idea is, they're like, well... The sort of weird semi-totem pole things, the tikis, isn't it? They're stackable, mix and match. You can have the four turtles, which are all very similar. Uh, Michelangelo has his tongue out because he is a party dude. And there's Splinter in the middle. Um, Shredder in the middle, dear. There's no Splinter, actually. That's a disappointment. Who are these made by? Beeline. We're a load of bees in a line that have achieved sentiency. Hand wash only, not microwave. Right. It's bursting out of the bloody box. You see that? Blimey. Made your box a bit small, lads. Nickelodeon, which means it's one of the later ones. Oh god, it's actually porcelain. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. I was expecting a sort of plasticky thing, but no. That will shatter if you drop it. That's always good. And there he is, Donatello. That is a uh, friend of the channel, Dan's uh, favourite Ninja Turtle. Useful bit of information for you there. Maybe I will give this to him and he can use it to keep a pen in or something. That's uh, pretty good. Quite like that. I like that. I wasn't expecting it to actually be porcelain. Nicely glazed, bold use of colour, although minimalist. And also, he's got like uh, squiggly things in his tits, which is interesting. Um, I am slightly worried that his bow stuff does just look like a bit of beef jerky that he's been chewing on and not enjoying, judging by the facial expression. But there we are. That's all right, isn't it? The other non-flat thing in here is Captain America, circa 1940. All of him in this box. This is not a toy. This product is intended for adults only. Oh, it's a sex toy. Oh, no, it isn't. It's 1940s Captain America Shield. Once a six scaled replica loot crate exclusive. Oh, go on then. Um, I'm not, so, I'm not so sold on loot crate exclusive and stuff because they keep showing up in uh, discount shops in the UK. But, uh, well, certain items, little figure ones do. Oh, this is nice. Yep, from the first Avenger, an old Captain America film. We've had three of the buggers now, haven't we? Um, that's, yeah, again, really good. Really well painted. Actual metal. Um, it's got some plastic handles on the back. And I'm going to presume that by using the power of assembly, we can make a sort of uh, thing out of this. Here on. Rip it open. And I guess this clips in here. Com -sa. Yeah, there we go. That goes in there. And glory be... It's Captain America's original shield. And I thought most people would want the sort of more modern round one, but there we are. This is a bit of a different one in it, and it's from EFX Collectibles. I don't know who they are, but their logo has a film strip in it. Yeah, that's nice. Really like that, actually. A couple of really nice little things this month thus far. And ooh, that appears to be about it, except for, my God, I'm going to have to assume... Yep. Yeah. This is obviously an original one, and why can't I get this out of the pissing box? There we are. Oh, there's something else in there. Mighty pin badge. 
So it's a reprint of Action Comics number one from June 1938. If you do have an original one of these in your house, it's worth almost 12 pence now. Please give it to me for free. Now these things are worth literally millions in good condition. Not the reprints, the originals, obviously. This is an interesting thing, I've never actually seen. Um, an action comics number one, obviously, because the amount of it. But it is Superman's first appearance in it, which I'm sure you all know. There he is, fucking up somebody's car for being a crim. The best part of this cover is obviously the look on this man's face as he runs away. His mind has been blown. <laughs> Things will never be the same again. And also, hopefully, he'll pick a better tie tomorrow. Um, so what we go is this much thicker thing than I thought it would be. So yeah, there's Superman. Your foot will do just as well. For, for what? Um, what is this? Some sort of cowboy strip? Chuck Dawson! I don't know why Chuck is in inverted commas, because his name is actually Charles. What is this? Zatara, Master Magician. I've not heard of Zatara, Master Magician. He appears to be able to uh, float. But Zatara's magical powers save him and he floats gently down to Earth. What a world we live in. And the Tigress, so-called because he's got a stripy jumper. What else have we got going on here? South Sea Strategy by Captain Frank Thomas. Always nice. Sticky Mitt Stimson by Alka. <laughs> Sticky Mitt Stimson. He's a thief. Does he get away with it at the end? Um, yeah, kind of. That actually surprises me. Yeah, he, ma he manages to get away with thievery. Superman should have fucked him up like he fucked up that car. The Adventures of Marco Polo. He's a man who invented mints with holes in. Pep Morgan. They're really keen on um, nicknames with inverted commas around. Pep Morgan, versatile young athlete, is fighting Sailor Sorensen for the coveted light heavyweight championship. Pop Burkett, Pep's trainer and pal, is in a fighter's corridor sailor. What? Pep's trainer and pal is in the fighter's corner. Sailor is managed by the unscrupulous Doc Lowry. Ah, oh, right, there should be a full stop there. Sailor is the other guy, and he's managed by the unscrupulous Doc Lowry. Gotcha. There we are. Well, there's some fightings going on there. Scoop Scanlon, five-star reporter. Well, no inverted commas around there, so I'm going to have to assume his real name is Scoop. If your first name was Scoop, you would pretty much have to either serve ice cream or become a journalist. Any more colour? Yes, immediately. Tex Thompson by Bernard Bailey. He's called Tex. His name is Thompson. He's a girl with a satisfied smile. A satisfied smile was evident on the girl's face. Ooh, I don't know what the story is there, but it sounds uh, intriguing. And that takes up quite a lot of room. And then at the end, we've got Stardust by the Stargazer. Sadly, not Stardust the Supervillain by Fletcher Hanks, which is just astonishing. Um, Charles Boyer smoked as many as four packs of cigarettes a day during the filming of The Garden of Allah. Every time he started to smoke, he was called to act in a scene. Wow. I think that may actually be the worst anecdote I've ever heard. And at the end, Moloff, or Moldoff even, gives us odds and ends. There's uh, pitcher Lee Grissom says he is anxious to pitch both games of a double header someday. Good for you, Grissom. I hope you did. And finally on the back, oh my god, here we go. Oh, I can't make out any of the text. It's all been sort of uh, corrupted over the years, but um, there's some astonishing stuff here. Midget pocket radio, a roll moniker automatic mouth organ. Pooh, pooh, I spit on your inferior non automatic mouth organs. A whoopee cushion, throw your voice. Dance, world's smallest candid camera, jujitsu, all of it, bulldog fish hooks, there's some words in an order, broadcast through your radio with World Mike, it's just a bloke who comes around and has magic powers, wonderful x-ray, learn to hypnotise, it's all bullshit, blonde wigs, ah, oh, what days, that's, that's great, um, I can't, it's, it's, these comics never feel like they're worth much money, but my god, there's a bit of fun in that, isn't there, and finally... A pin. A Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles pin. They've done away with having their own logo in the designs ages ago. Now they're just nice pins, which um, I can't really disagree with. It even looks like a... and it's stippled like a uh, sewer entrance thing. I can't think of the bloody name of it. The round thing that goes on a, a, a sewer cover. There we are, that'll do. That's uh, really nice. Again, I'm really glad. They've done away with um, the obsession of sticking their bloody logo and everything, just giving you nice things. And finally, it's the book I don't give a fucking shit about. Oh, it was an interview with Gary Witter. That's actually quite interesting. He wrote um, 
Probably right. Book of Eli. Uh, was it After Earth him? I don't know. But uh, the story for Star Wars Rogue One and does a lot of uh, Star Wars Rebels as well. Calling all scientific geniuses. Experiment with the mad science loot gaming crate. Or alternately, don't. Well, I can't be bothered with that. Well, that's pretty nifty, isn't it? I, I liked all the things that were in it. What more do you want out of life? I um, feel like there should be one more item, do you know what I mean? Because we've got the shirt, the thing there, that's on the comic. I don't know, I feel like it should be something extra, maybe a little cheapy just to make up the numbers, don't know. But overall, they're doing what we wanted from them, higher quality items, um, rather than a load of old shite, so you can't complain. Well, that's the end of that then. Got nothing else for this time. Ah, I'll tell you what I've got. A leather bookmark that I found in an old book that I bought. See, somebody's drawn like a really bad frog on it, um, with a silver pen and put Reddit, Reddit, haha, <laughs> because it sounds a bit like Ribbit, Ribbit, what frogs say. I'm going to presume that's uh, where Reddit, the website, got its name from, but spells it differently. Because for some reason, I don't, they didn't match spellings with an old bookmark that, judging by the age of the book, I would have said was been in there since at least the early 90s. Maybe beforehand. What a world we live in. So I'm going to do my own uh, crate next month, the Ashens Crate. Volume 2, it's going to be full of customised bookmarks, and that's it, and it's going to cost £38.